the last video lesson, we discussed the different plant sampling methods. It's time to collect the specimens and press them. When setting out on a field collection, it's important to get four to five samples of each plant. Make sure that they're healthy. Take a photo and record the corresponding filing for easier reference later on. Remember to tag everything immediately and record all relevant data on the spot, including the local name and medicinal, agricultural, and industrial uses. For plant samples with roots, clean the soil thoroughly from the roots with clean running water. For fruits and flowers growing on tree trunks, carve them out along with part of the bark. Have your specimens? Press them as soon as possible. If you can't, tie them together and put them in plastic bags for alcohol treatment. Otherwise, proceed with the pressing process. To press plants, make sure they're clean and dry and discard any bad leaves. Arrange them in between sheets of newspapers. Face some leaves up and others face down. Fit the specimen in the newspaper and plant press. Add more dryers and presto! Place under direct sunlight or near a bonfire to speed up drying. Is your specimen too large for your press? Bend it into a V, N, M, or W shape. For large compound leaves, cut along the rachis lengthwise and use only half the leaf for the press. If part of the plant gets detached during drying, place it in a paper packet and dry it with the rest of the specimen. Second method uses of heaters placed in wooden cabinets holding the pressed specimen. This is referred to as artificial drying using a cabinet dryer. You can make your own using a wooden box and light bulbs as a heat supply. Use a screen to separate the samples from direct contact with the bulbs. If you're using a cabinet dryer, check your specimens every three or so hours for progress in changing dryers. Be sure to keep heat moderate or you might end up with ashes. Once dry, pressed specimens are placed inside freezers for two to three days. This is called deep freeze. This protects the specimens from decay and preserves them in their current state. Once preservation is finished, the specimens are now ready to be mounted for archiving purposes.